I'm gonna express them, damn it. Hello, lovely humans of the internet. My husband, I think, called you all songbirds at some point. I think we're still trying to figure out exactly what fans of OC would be called. If you have any ideas uh, of, of names that we could name this community we're forming here on the internet, please let us know in the comments below. I would be very interested in hearing. I wanted to thank you all for being patient with us as our schedule has been slightly inconsistent lately. A lot of it has to do with the fact that we're moving and we have a ton, a ton of projects going on in our new house but all at the same time right now and there's a lot of stuff going on in the rest of our lives as well so we are getting videos up as soon as we possibly can I promise and I am super excited for the future of the reaction and analysis series of this channel because we have both new artists that are continuing to be introduced to the channel and some reoccurring artists that will be coming back I know my Angelina and Aurora fans have probably been chomping at the bit waiting for me to do another video of one of those artists so that will definitely be coming again soon and we've gotten so many crazy requests for Dimash and for Pentatonix ever since my husband and I started releasing those videos so we will definitely continue to upload videos on those artists thank you for letting us surpass 2,000 subscribers that is so amazing it's just I'm so grateful for it if I don't have time to answer as many comments as I used to it's just because we're getting a lot more now mental health stuff I have to make sure that I'm taking good care of myself in that arena I can get a little bit easily overwhelmed with that but just know that if I haven't answered your comments um, we're still reading them we still find them so many of them are so wonderful and insightful and we are so thankful for all of the support so keep giving us your feedback because requests especially are something that we really take into account we are doing a benefit concert for um, humanitarian aid sent to Ukraine right now. It's called Artists for Peace. We are partnering with um, Global Giving, which is a highly reputable charity that basically helps um, organizations that are local and on the ground and helping with things such as childcare, um, medical supplies, food supplies, all of those things are being given to victims of this terrible war. So if you are interested in helping us with that fundraiser, the link to purchasing tickets on our event page is below. It is featuring over 30 artists from all over the world. Like we have people from um, South Africa, from Peru, from Germany, from Italy, from the US, and so many other places. Purchase your donation-based ticket by April 29th, if you're watching this video before then. There will be a three-week grace period after the initial premiere on April 29th, where you will also be able to buy a ticket to this concert on demand and support the cause. And there's a possibility of that being pushed out beyond three weeks as well but if any updated news comes <laughs> on that front we will make sure to let you know let's get into the reaction this is a brand new artist to the channel and I am so excited I've kind of been a fan of hers for a while I've definitely been following her career um, but it is none other than the Billie Eilish <laughs> I've done her brother on this channel actually um, he produced an incredible song that I did a reaction to a while back I did want to share this article about like, possible interpretations of the song and just go to say that she's sort of taking a page out of Aurora's book a little bit. If you've seen any of my Aurora videos, you know that Aurora is an artist that likes to purposefully leave the meanings behind her songs ambiguous for the sake of allowing the listener's imagination to wander and soar to whatever they think it should mean to them. She kind of says that she doesn't want to put any words in other people's mouths according to this article on geo.tv that I found about an interview that she did with Vivo. She did say that the album Happier Than Ever, which is the song, the title track from the album is actually the song we'll be reacting to today, has been very, very much um, influenced by this idea of timelessness. She really wants um, to create a timeless record, but what I loved that she said in this interview was that she wanted to make a timeless record that wasn't timeless in terms of what other people thought, but really just timeless to herself. Self. Um, she said that she gathered a lot of inspiration from a lot of older artists that she grew up loving, um, including people like Frank Sinatra, Julie London, and Peggy Lee. So there's a little bit of like jazz standard quality to some of the pieces on this album, in addition to the kind of alt pop um, 
edgy vibe that um, Billie Eilish has had in all of her previous music as well. Quote, a big goal for me to make things feel like the same project, not just like the same song over and over again. So she wanted to create something that was thematically cohesive without the songs seeming too repetitious. She concluded this interview by saying that the main thing she would hope for is that she wants people to kind of listen to the music and go, oh my gosh, I do feel like that. I didn't even know that I felt like that. So she's trying to tap into universally relatable emotions that are um, things that we didn't even consciously realize we related to, but things that we kind of vibe with, for lack of better terms, on an even deeper level. But let's get into it. We're going to watch the official music video, because I love music videos, of Billie Eilish's Happier Than Ever, my first Billie Eilish reaction. When I'm away from you, I'm happier than ever. Wish I could explain it better. I wish it wasn't true. Give me a day or two to think of something clever. To write myself a letter To tell me what to do There is an interesting effect in a lot of Billie's music that I've noticed where she, I think, stands very, very close to a very hot mic when she's recording. And I think that that is intentional. I think they like to incorporate um, elements of her breathing into the record. This sort of sound effect with the mic that she was using in the process of recording was intentional. She is singing in a very hushed tone. She's singing at what would be considered kind of a piano um, musical dynamic, which means quiet. She still wants her words to be clearly understood. So that's that's a way to do it, is to kind of bring out the, the sounds of the consonants. And because breath in and of itself can be very expressive, she wanted that to be a little bit more evident in the overall landscape of the song too. It sounds like kind of like a ukulele type thing happening in the background with the, um, or if anything, just like a guitar, but it sounds like ukulele. I'm very vocal centric in my understanding of music. The instrumental is very bare bones. Um, it's very chordal. She is talking on the phone casually in this home that kind of looks like an old Hollywood glam sort of setup. Everything's very pink and pastel. And what's interesting is this kind of sounds like a love song or like a lullaby, but it's so not. She's talking about a very opposite sentiment than what the melody itself seems to lead on in the music um, because she's saying when I'm away from you I'm happier than ever and I don't want that to be the case I don't want it to be that I feel better without you but it's kind of like she almost gets this sense of relief when this person she's talking about is gone and that's a hard feeling to sit with so let's see how the song continues do you read my interviews or do you skip my avenue when you said you were passing through. Was I even on your way? I knew when I asked you to be cool about what I was telling you. You would do the opposite of what you said you'd do, and I'd end up more afraid don't say it isn't fair you clearly weren't aware that you made me miserable so if you really wanna know when i'm away from when I first watched this music video, I used to think that the water that was dripping on the ground was like tears that were like falling onto the table because she was leaning over the table or something like that. But that's actually the water from what you'll see 
later in the music video, <laughs> spoiler alert if you haven't seen this yet, starting to leak through into the house. And so there's this idea that the, the beginning of this song is extremely contained emotionally. She's seemingly having a very, very surprisingly calm conversation, at least on the phone. Maybe she's talking directly to this person. Maybe she's even pretending to talk on the phone just so she can process her emotions. I don't know. You could kind of take it either way. But assuming that she is actually talking to somebody on the phone, she's having this seemingly level-headed conversation. And you know how like when you're confronting somebody who did like kind of make you miserable or didn't treat you well, and you're sort of trying to keep it all together so you don't seem like the person that's as affected? That's sort of the vibe that this music video is giving off. The emotion of the music is intentionally sort of um, not flatlining because it is emotional, but it's she's she's putting up a front to stay as stoic as possible around this person right now. When you see that water start to leak into the house, you can feel that that's kind of symbolic potentially for the emotion that's starting to well up because it's really hard to stay, to not be emotional around somebody that um, hurt you this much or cut you this deep. I'm happier than ever. Wish I could yeah, it's leaking more on the walls. I wish it wasn't true. pattern completely changed in the accompaniment. All of a sudden, instead of these like really, really spacious chords that were giving her a lot of um, room and a lot of um, freedom, you start to see kind of the power like flickering on and off in the house and the accompaniment pattern changes to something with more of a sense of urgency. It's like this evolution of this slow unraveling of emotions. I absolutely love it. I love taking a closer look at this video. I've been fascinated by this video ever since I first saw it. So I just, I love how it's it's just so spooky and eerie because it's this very posh Hollywood put together home that seems to look perfect from the outside. And she's just wearing this casual t-shirt, but she has this sort of like Hollywood platinum blonde hair and this really soft, perfect looking makeup. And it could kind of be a little bit of, sim uh, of symbolism or kind of a metaphor for how women are sort of expected to just only portray sweet emotions in front of people, especially female celebrities, and how she could be looking so perfect and put together on the outside, but the inside still will eventually show itself if it if those emotions are big enough. If um, It's really hard to just continue to put up a front when you're feeling like your emotions are unraveling inside of you, and eventually you're just going to... You call me again, drunk in the bench, driving home under the influence. You scared me to death, but I'm wasting my breath. Cause you only listen to your fucking friends. I don't relate to you. I don't relate to you, no. Cause I never treat me this shit. We have a massive shift. The entire mood of the video changed. She opens up this door and the house floods. She is swimming through the flood. She is um, on the roof of the house now and it's flooded so much that you can only see the roof. There's rain falling everywhere. So it's flooding even more. And she's just allowing herself to sink into these emotions now. She's literally swimming through it. Before it was kind of like she was contained in this posh house and she was trying to prevent the floodgates from opening. But then she decided 
decided to open the door and she decided to sit with these feelings. She decided to allow herself to wallow in them and to own them fully so that she can make it to the other side. And at this point, the lyrics change into something that's angrier. We, instead of having a one instrument chordal accompaniment, we have a bunch of instruments backing her up. We have percussion backing her up. And then all of the sudden, the, the tone of her voice, instead of becoming a being like intentionally subdued or having a whisper quality to it becomes a lot fuller in this part. And there's some intentional vocal distortion in there that gives it a bit of an edge. And her lyrics are more angry. When the phone conversation ended or when she just put the phone down and was like, I'm just not going to listen to this crap anymore. She was able to just say, I'm going to own these feelings for myself. I'm going to express them, damn it. it blends so seamlessly it seems like in the recording studio she might have recorded some of her own background vocals which sometimes happens and so it's her voice doubling in different harmonies over itself these layers of vocal harmonies and parts that are kind of adding to each other and stacking up on top of each other as the song goes and it raises the stakes emotionally for the song so everything that is happening in the instrumental in the melody in the vocal line all of that is meant to serve the song's overall emotional purpose. The song has two different distinct emotional landscapes that contrast each other. Restrained, trying to keep it together, and I'm just gonna let the floodgates open. She doesn't care if the rain falls on her. She doesn't care if it ruins her hair, makes her makeup messed up. She doesn't care if she's swimming in these feelings. Um, she's owning the fact that, you know what? I was treated wrong. This wasn't my fault. This person, <laughs> based off of the lyrics, sounds like they were a very abusive individual that um, was very selfish and was not allowing her to claim her own space, but was, she literally says, you made all of my moments your own. You know, I was always trying to justify your behavior to other people. I passed you off as misunderstood. When in reality, you were acting, <laughs> excuse, excuse my language, like an ass and you know, you were acting that way in front of everybody and I shouldn't have just been justifying that behavior. I should have seen it for what it was, but it's not my fault that you treated me that way. And so it's kind of a, a, this whole entire song, I feel like is an ownership of one's own emotions and having the strength to move on from being in an oppressive relationship. Whether that would be a platonic or a romantic one is up to your interpretation. Um, it seems like these two were romantic based off of some of the text in the piece, but that's my own theory. Like I said, it sounds like Billie Eilish kind of wanted to leave it ambiguous. So you can relate this song to any situation in your life that it may be applicable to. Wow, 
Super cool video. Um, I absolutely, like I said, I love the two emotional contrasts in it. I think that's my favorite part. I love that it shows off a lot of kind of different vocal colors for Billy. Billy kind of tends to stay into the, in this whispery area, which isn't actually bad for your voice if you know how to support it. Um, obviously, it should be balanced out a little bit more by what we consider kind of like cleaner or pure tone, which has just this is is kind of just the basis of foundational vocal technique. But as long as um, she's breathing as long as she's supporting the tone you can really alter your voice in a lot of different ways without hurting it there's been some areas um some performances i've seen of hers where i wish that she supported her high notes better especially for songs like when the party's over but um for a song like this i feel like this was very um appropriately done vocally and it was extremely expressive and i overall really like her aesthetic i think it's different i think it appeals to different emotions in people and i do think that she's really an artist that um, has gotten for some reason a lot of critique for this album in particular but I happen to really really like this album I think it has it experiments with new noises while also being quintessentially her sound. So Billy, we're a fan of you over here at OC. We love the work that you're doing. We think you're super cool. <laughs> and I hope everybody enjoyed this reaction. Um, a brand new artist for the channel, Billy Eilish. But um, if you guys are interested, I will definitely be doing some more reactions on her in the future because I really enjoy her music videos, especially. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, continue to support this channel, support Artists for Peace if you can. Bye. Oh,